Jeez. Explosions and explosives have been a significant part of Western cultures for some time, stemming from widespread appearance in films such as Transformers and the record-breaking demolition in Spectre. As well as music videos, YouTube channels, and that iconic Brainiac episode. Explosives are, however, weapons first and foremost, with colossal destructive power that is used in everything from controlled demolition to the ultimate horror of the civilized world, nuclear bombs. But how can such devastating tools be made safe for entertaining the demands of pop culture or for transport across already dangerous war zones? In this video, I aim to answer that question. Welcome to a world of safer detonations. Welcome to the world of polymer bonded explosives. Before we focus on their uses, we first need to ask, what is a polymer bonded explosive? Well, a PBX, as we abbreviate it, is an explosive composition where a high explosive is stabilized by containment in a polymer. You might better know polymers in the form of plastics, water bottles, and plastic bags made from materials like PET and polythene. First, I'm going to explain exactly what makes a polymer. In the simplest terms, polymer means many molecules. They are large or macromolecules composed of many thousands of much smaller molecules, known as monomers. One or more monomers can form a repeat unit. Shown here is the repeat unit of polystyrene, a polymer composed from only a single monomer, styrene. The N reflects that the number of repeat units in a polymer chain is variable, but that the completed chain will be some multiple, if you will, of the repeat unit. Polystyrene is one example of a chain or addition polymer, synthesized by free radical polymerization. While I won't be able to cover every method of polymer synthesis in the same detail, I'll focus on polystyrene here, as it is highly important to the field of PBX formulation. The free radical polymerization method begins with a radical initiator, in this case, benzoyl peroxide. UV light breaks the weak oxygen-oxygen bond, creating two benzoyl radicals, molecules with an unpaired electron. These highly reactive species attack the double bond of an alkene group, in this case, that of styrene. The breaking of the pi bond leads to a terminal radical, where the unpaired electron sits at the end of the chain, allowing it to react further. Propagation steps, where additional monomers add to the chain, occur very fast, with styrene growing at an approximate rate of one monomer every 0.75 milliseconds. The chain finishes growing at a termination step, of which there are two types. A chain combination, where two terminal radicals collide and bond, produces a single large chain. In a less common scenario, this proportionation occurs. A hydrogen is moved from one end of the chain by another, forming one saturated chain and one unsaturated chain. The other main category of polymers are step growth polymers, of which the most famous examples tend to be polyesters or polyamides. Chances are you're wearing some of these polymers right now. Whether it's a simple polyester in a t-shirt, nylon in socks, or polycarbonate in spectacle lenses, step growth polymers are formed by relatively simple condensation reactions. A small molecule, usually water, is liberated in the formation of new bonds between the monomers. Last important concept before we get on to the really exciting part, and this is the glass transition temperature. Every polymer has a glass transition, or Tg, and every polymer is different. What it means is that below the Tg, the polymer is very hard and brittle, like a glass. You might be familiar with acrylic plastic from DT lessons. This is a polymer with a Tg higher than room temperature. Above their Tg, polymers become flexible and rubbery. A good example of a material with Tg below room temperature would be the silicones used in rubber oven gloves. Alright, now on to the explosive. Explosive materials tend to be organic molecules with a high proportion of oxygen and nitrogen compared to carbon, allowing for a release of the blast of heated gas that we call a shock wave. 
A detonation is started by inputting energy into the explosive. Heat or electrical sparks will raise the temperature to a point where the explosive breaks into its constituent atoms. Here, we can see RDX decomposing. The atoms will combine back into the lowest energy configuration, here forming an abundance of N2 and CO2 gases. The expansive pressure of these gases creates a detonation front, where the explosive material is compressed. This compression allows the ambient temperature of the surroundings to become sufficient to decompose the compressed molecules, thereby propagating the shock wave and creating a detonation. A detonation can also be triggered by another shock wave for the same reason. In fact, this is often the preferred method for detonating PBXs due to the high cost of electrical initiators. What's so special about PBXs then? Well, they're harder to set off than conventional explosives, and, well, that's about it actually. And what actually makes a polymer bond an explosive? Well, as the name would suggest, an explosive and a polymer are required. Other ingredients, such as a plasticizer or a phlegmatizer, are added. Plasticizers force polymer chains apart and are added to lower the PG of the polymer. In PBXs, this results in moldable and malleable plastic explosives such as Semtex. Phlegmatizers are waxes that absorb kinetic energy from shocks to make the explosive less sensitive. Sensitivity is a description of how easy it is to initiate an explosive reaction, so phlegmatizers can be key to creating a safe explosive composition. PBX formulation means that if an explosive is dropped, or sometimes even shot, it will not detonate, making them safe to carry for military personnel. In the animation, you can see the phlegmatizers deforming to absorb the shock without transferring kinetic energy to the explosive agent. To bring together what we've learned about PBXs, let's take a tour of the US Claymore mine. Packed with a moulded brick of C4, the mine is intended to fire steel balls for dramatic anti-personnel effect. C4 is a PBX based on RDX, with polyisobutene as the plastic binder. The exact composition, including what plasticizers or phlegmatizers are present, does not appear to be public information. However, C4 behaves with reasonable safety, resisting rifle fire and dropping with minimal risk, as well as being safe to mould in the manufacture of the mine.